Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin. It is Saturday, January the 9th, just going on 5 p.m. this evening, and we're hot on the heels of the first devlog of the year, which I just posted this morning. In that last devlog, of course, I wrapped up by getting the player aboard their research vessel, at which point they'll be able to take part in a number of activities, like using a sea chart to plot a course to a new island, or fishing, or using research tools in the cabin on the research vessel to learn more about specimens collected out in the field. This episode is going to be the kicking off point for development of some of these activities. But first, much like the last video, I want to focus a little bit of my efforts at the start on my interaction system because that's really going to be the backbone of how the player initiates these various activities once they're on the research vessel. I'm actually pretty happy with my interaction system at the moment, so I'll go ahead and give you a very quick overview. As you can see, we're obviously looking at the player here, and the important child that I want to look at is the interaction manager. That is an Area 2D with a collision shape, and that's just this outer blue circle that we just had there on the player. Now this Area 2D is set up to look for only interactable objects, and that's reflected over here in the mask. Now if we jump into this script, you can see it's actually super straightforward. Whenever we come into contact with an interactable object, we just store a reference to it. And if we have a reference to an interactable object and we make a call to initiate that interaction using the interact key, which in my case is E right now, then because we know we have an interactable object on the other side, we know that they've implemented receive interaction. So I just hand off at that point to that interactable object to initiate whatever it wants to do. Now, in the case of our research vessel here, the interactable object is this anchor on the sand. So if I get close to it and press E, receive interaction will be called on this sand anchor. And what it's responsible for doing is presenting this dialog asking if I'm ready to board. And like I mentioned, this is all working pretty well, but the only problem is when you get close to this thing, there's no way to know that it's actually interactable. There's no prompt to say, hey, go ahead and press the interaction key and you'll be presented with a dialog to board. That's what I'm gonna start working on tonight. My initial idea is to have some kind of overhead prompt appear when you're in range of interacting with some interactable object. And it would be great if that overhead prompt gave you some kind of hint as to what the interaction actually is. So maybe if I got close enough to the fisherman here to have a conversation, we'd see a little thought bubble appear above the player's head with some kind of icon to let you know that you're about to initiate a conversation. While I'm working on that, I wanna break the fourth wall here for just a minute and extend a really special thank you to you guys as the channel approaches its two year milestone this week. It's kind of crazy to look back at that first devlog from January of 2019 and just reflect on how far we've come since then. And it really is all thanks to you guys and the support you've given me, my devlogs and my goofy games over the years. Whether this is your very first time on the channel or if you've been with me since the very beginning, I'm just really grateful to have you here and I'm excited to see what we can build in 2021. I actually do have a few exciting plans for the new year, including live streams of Dauphin development in the near future, and maybe even a Discord channel if I feel I can devote the time to it. In the meantime, I do have one announcement I'd like to make today, and that is the launch of my Patreon page. It's something that a lot of people have asked me about, and also something I've purposefully avoided for quite a while. I really wanted to make sure I could both build and sustain a healthy habit of content delivery before creating a page like this, and at the two-year mark here, I feel like I've achieved that. I do want to make it perfectly clear that no contributions are needed for me to be able to keep developing Dauphin and creating devlogs. I have a full-time job that I love, I do everything that you see here on the channel in my free time, and I intend to keep it that way. This is just meant to be a totally optional way to show an even greater level of support for the time and effort I put into my content, as well as help me invest in tools to make my videos and games even better. All right, enough about all that. More info to come really soon on the live streams. And in the meantime, thank you guys again for the wonderful past two years. Let's get back to the devlog. Hey everyone, welcome back to Wednesday morning going on 8.30. I know it's been a while since we last chatted, so sorry about that. I ended up trying to create a few small improvements based on your suggestions from the last devlog, and what I thought were gonna be small tasks ended up being huge snowballs of effort. But anyway, I have made good progress on my interaction system indicators, so I wanna show you those really quickly before I have to get to work. 
So here we are back on the beach, and of course one of the first things you'll probably notice is this gangplank extending from the research vessel. I think this was probably the most requested item from the last devlog. Players wanted to be able to quickly leave and exit the boat whenever they wanted to during their exploration of the island, and that makes total sense to me. So we no longer have to interact with this anchor to get on the boat, we can just walk up the gangplank. And I say walk because I actually did introduce a new animation for this. Instead of just running up the gangplank onto the research vessel, once you hit that gangplank, you will start walking, and that'll be the case as you walk all over the vessel. This is just another way for me to kind of slow things down and make the player realize that they are safe on this vessel. You'll also, of course, notice on the boat my first draft at the Interaction Manager Indicator, and that's this little thought bubble floating over the player's head. What this is meant to represent is that the player recognizes that they are near an interactable object, and the icon inside the bubble here is meant to portray the type of interactable object that it is. In this case, we're close to the door that's on the side of the cabin here. If we step outside of the radius of that door, that will disappear, and of course, if we get close, it reappears. This system is not totally finished yet. You can see as I approach the fisherman here, instead of me getting a thought bubble, we both get a thought bubble, and it is definitely displaying the wrong type of information. What I really want here is an icon that will let you know that you have the ability to talk to another person. I do actually have the system set up to recognize different types of interactions, I just haven't created the artwork yet. So that's gonna come next. Once I wrap up those few small pieces of art and apply them to the various interactions that I have in the prototype level, I think we'll be ready to actually enter the cabin on the research vessel, at which point we can start designing the activities for the player to perform within. But for now, I need to grab some coffee and get to work, so we'll catch up once we're inside the cabin. Welcome back everyone, it is now the morning of Sunday the 17th, a whole week after the start of this devlog. I was initially hoping to put this video out yesterday, but it turns out I just completely underestimated the amount of effort required to thoughtfully design those systems that would allow the player to walk up the gangplank onto the research vessel and ultimately enter the cabin. That said, after a few days of initial designs and refactoring, I am really happy with where we landed. So here we are on the island, and the first thing I want to touch on is the challenge I faced getting the player to walk the plank, as it were, to board the research vessel. This is something that probably took me the most amount of time over the past couple days. Now it might seem like you'd be able to create an instance of the research vessel here, just plop it onto the island, and set up some colliders so that the player could walk right on board. Unfortunately, that's not entirely the case. There's a couple of perspective issues that we kind of have to deal with here. For example, as the player walks onto the gangplank here, we want him to be on top of it. But if he were to go to the left of the gangplank, he would technically be behind the boat and behind these larger structures on the boat like the cabin. Now similarly, once we are actually on the vessel itself, we want the player to appear in front of this back railing and in front of the barrel, but also behind the front railing. And we also want him to have these interactions with the cabin as you might expect where you can walk in front of and behind it. And on top of all this, you don't want to achieve this by kind of just setting absolute values for all of the Z indexes of these game objects. Now this desire to create this kind of depth effect that I'm talking about is a pretty common one in 2D games like this. So Godot actually provides a node to help us solve this issue without having to explicitly set Z indexes of all these nodes. This node is called the Y sort, and here in Godot's documentation you get a very straightforward explanation of what it does. It sorts all child nodes based on their Y positions. These Y sort nodes are at the heart of all of my scenes in Dauphin. Here we're looking at my overall island scene, certainly the biggest one I have so far in the game. And over here in the hierarchy, you might see that there's not a whole lot until we expand the Y sort node, which is a direct child of the root node here for the island. If I expand this, you'll basically see that everything is in here. Everything you see on the screen is a child of the Y sort. That includes things like my trees and rocks and bushes, all of the organisms, including the sand crabs and the boss, structures like the fisherman's hut, the research vessel, and of course the player. Because all of these entities are children of this Y sort, I'm able to walk in front of and behind them like I was just showing you without having to write any code to explicitly do that. My research vessel here is designed in much the same way. I do have separate sprites for the rear deck and the front deck, but in between those I have a Y sort node, which is the home to things like the cabin and the barrel and any other accessories I might choose to add to the vessel in the future. 
When the player is aboard the vessel, he needs to be a child of the Y sort so that he appears in front of the rear deck, behind the front deck, and is able to have correct interactions where he can walk in front of and behind other items in the Y sort like the cabin. So finally, the solution to preserving all of these interactions as we want is to reparent the player from the island's Y sort to the research vessel's Y sort when he boards the research vessel. And this is where that's happening here in my terrain body entered signal that I'm capturing on the research vessel when the player walks on board. In the body of this function, these are really the only important things we're doing. We're saving a reference to the player's global position, and then we're removing the player from its current parent, which is of course the Y sort on the island if we're just boarding the boat for the first time. At that point, we make a deferred call to board player. And inside the board player function, all we do is add the player back as a child of the research vessel's Y sort and make sure the global position is correctly set. The result, of course, is the ability to preserve interactions with items both on the island and within the research vessel with a smooth transition between the two. All in all, a pretty elegant solution for what I consider to be kind of a complex problem. With all that said, I will end my rambling by actually entering the cabin on the research vessel, which was the whole point of this anyway. So as we approach the cabin, of course, we get the hint above the player here, and when we press the interaction key, we will transition to the interior of the research vessel. Now this, in my opinion, is looking pretty cozy so far. We've obviously reused a lot of stuff from the fisherman's hut, and we have some visual defects like the top of the wall here and the bed just looking generally bad. But other than that, what I really want to draw your attention to is what I'm calling the cartographer's table here. This is what the player will be able to walk up to and have an interaction with that will allow him to pull up a sea chart or something to that effect and plot a course to a new island. That sea chart is what I'm going to start working on today. It's ultimately going to be a probably pretty large and complex piece of UI, and I certainly don't have a finished vision for what that'll end up being. So I'm just going to start by opening up a sprite and noodling on some art for a bit. I'll catch up once I have something worth sharing. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Friday at 7 a.m. It's been like five days since our last check-in, and to be honest, it's just been a week. Busy week at work, and also facing some creative block, trying to work out how I want to build the C-chart for the player to interact with in the cabin. Not to worry, though. Over the past few days, I did manage to break through that and create something that I think is really good for a first draft of this new system. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. So here we are on the deck of the research vessel, and of course we'll want to head into the cabin to select a new destination, or at least look at what we have so far on the map. So when we walk inside and approach the navigation table here, we're of course given this interaction prompt, which is meant to look like this is a tool that we can interact with. So at this point, I'll go ahead and press E, my interaction key, and our C chart, or the first draft of it anyway, will slide up into view. What we're looking at is an interface designed to help the player select a new location to travel to based on what they do or do not already know about that new location. There's a couple elements on the screen to help him or her do that, so we'll go ahead and walk through those really quickly. The first and arguably most important part of this interface is of course the map, which is this big blue rectangle with grid lines that hopefully looks like the ocean, and of course we see an island up here in the top left corner. I wanted this to be an enjoyable piece of interface to interact with, so I tried to create some really nice zooming to the position of the mouse, which took me longer than I care to admit, and panning once you are zoomed in. Now, if we take a look at our island here, you'll notice that when we hover over it, it will produce a nice little outline, and if we actually click that, it will select it and start to populate data elsewhere on the C-chart. You can hopefully see kind of where I'm going with this. As you explore the world and discover new islands, or if an NPC gives you a hint about the location of a new island, it will appear here on your map. The first time you select it before you actually explore it, not a lot of information will pop up, but as you explore it and learn about the organisms on the island and the resources they provide, that information will be populated here for when you need to return later to gather more of those resources. Now obviously I don't really have all the data structures built out to support that yet, but I do think what I have here is a super strong foundation to build upon, and right now just being able to select an island should be all that I need to start the procedure of actually traveling from one island to another. 
With that final update, I think it's time to wrap up the devlog. I made so much progress over the past two weeks and I'm actually super excited about how this new navigation system is looking so far. Hope you guys enjoyed the devlog. If you did, consider giving me a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.